Hello there. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, I'm sure we are going to have a lot of fun. And this is Pinal the Way. Today we are going to talk about technology session, SQL Server session, which is elementary. The curious case of deceptive query optimizer. Now, before I start this session, I just wanted to talk and say, I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to meet virtually and stay connected. Now, don't think you are watching this presentation on your screen. That means we can't be friend, okay? So, yeah, stay in touch, um, um, tweet about it, talk about it, make a noise about it, and let's have um, a serious fun about this session because this is interactive session and you have to equally participate. So I suggest you take a piece of paper with you because you might want to select the options, questions which I'm going to ask. You might have to select the answer and then we'll take this session forward. Now, why I built this session? What is the philosophy behind this session? It's actually very simple. I just wanted to come up with a scenario where we feel we don't understand the query optimizer till today. Actually, everything which you see is normal for query optimizer, but for us, it might be a little bit challenging. And that's what I wanted to include in this presentation. So I decided I'll go out, talk to my friends and ask them, does anything about query optimizer confuse you? And whatever their answer was, I took it together and built this presentation. I talked to many people, but there are two people I want to give a credit for helping me build this one. One of them is Hugo, um, and I will share his <laughs> last name as well as your website. And also second one is Eric. Um, I'll also share his detail. Hugo and Eric, both of them helped me build this one. It was fun. They, they were also very kind, and I had an amazing conversation. And when I was talking with them, I learned so much about Query Optimizer. I, even though I knew, it's just fun to have a conversation. So that's the goal. I'm going to have a conversation with you, which will talk about Query Optimizer and how a normal people like you and me understand it. I think enough, enough conversation, enough beginning. We spent two minutes on it. So I think it's good. Now let me just get smaller so you can see the screen. All right then. So there we go. Um, here is the session title. Elementary, the curious case of deceptive query optimizer. As you know, the session is of 40 minutes and I have no intention to rush anything. So what I did is that I took the best part of the, all the material which I had and put them together in this uh, 40 minute session. So um, at any point of time, make sure if um, you can pause it or pause it or write it down. It's good. All right. So uh, I have three slides in this one. So this is the first slide you are seeing, um, Pinal Dave, I have title there. And second slide is, ah, let's start. I think we should just start. I mean, that is, we should just not delay anything. Let's start with our presentation. Let's start with our conversation. But before I do, I just have to share the final slide. And I want to just say thank you to all of you. And that's where you can download this script. So everything which I'm going to show you and also free uh, performance tuning scripts, you can download from the uh, URL which you're seeing on the screen. Just go there, drop your email address, and you'll get instant email with um, free performance tuning scripts. You just have to also check your email and give a double confirmation because I don't want anybody to put anybody's email address, right? Um, once you do that, um, write me back. If you don't get the scripts and anything, just say, hey, I want this particular script, and I'll be happy to provide you if you didn't get any email because email software sometimes doesn't deliver. I think with this, I'm done talking about slides. Time to go to demonstration. So buckle up, let's start. All right. So very first demonstration, which I want to show you uh, is from Hugo. Uh, Hugo Cornelis is a very kind friend of mine. Uh, um, very soft-spoken, very sharp. Um, his website is um, over here. He's from Netherlands and I like to have a very good, healthy argument with him because he is perfectionist. So with, with this, we start with um, the conversation which I had with him, and that was about top. So now we all know how the top works, right? I mean, select top 10 from the 
uh, table. I think that's what we are going to do now. We are going to do select top 10 from our table name and see how it works. So first thing first, I have already set up the script, which is I already have. I have created a table called orders, populated some data in it. Only reason I did all these things so you do not have to worry about it. So let me start this session first. Data is really not that important what I populated, but I'll show you what I did. So uh, sqlauthority.com, that's a database. I'm turning on time and IO and there we go. Now I'm just selecting the data to just show it to you that what it contains because many people would like, oh, you didn't show me the setup script. Yeah, well, look at that. It's a very straightforward script. Guys, so this took around, I think it's taking a while to even um, complete. It took around 12 seconds. Yeah, 12 seconds to complete. And when I go to messages, uh, I can see the query has CPU time of 750 milliseconds. The elapsed time is around 12 seconds, which we already know. And the logical read is around 27882. Now, I want you guys to remember this number. It's critical. It's important number. This is the number of the page. Um, if you just do select star from the table, like select star from the table, this is the number of the page you have to read. This is the one which you see, which is 27,882. That means if you just go crazy, read the complete table, this much time you will take, um, this much pages you will read. And each page is, is side of 8K. So take this number, multiply by 8K. That's pretty much the um, of what um, size of the table you will have it. So now the fun thing is this. So now um, what we need to do is this. Our problem statement is pretty simple. Find the top 10 oldest overdue orders. And we can easily do that by running this query. So I hope you can see the query on the screen. This is the um, query which we had to run. That's it, it's that simple. So let me just run this query, which says select top 10, order number, date, delivery date from orders, where delivery date um, is null. And I'm just ordering by order date because I wanted to find um, 10 oldest overdue orders. And that's why I don't have descending. Um, I was just uh, doing a trial run with one of my friends. He's like, oh, I want the oldest one. Don't you need a descending? If you put descending, you'll get the recent one. Think about it. Ha ha, isn't it? So, well, let's see the data. Um, I'll just run this query and he, oh yeah, the query took some time. It took around two seconds of time and it returned as 10 rows. Uh, and this is it. Oh, what? One second, one second. Uh, did we run the query? Uh, look at the logical read. It says it read around, let me just make it simple. Uh, okay, 3 million page reads to read only 10 rows. Hmm, just think about it. Uh, just think about it with me. Entire table was much smaller, isn't it? It's like 27,000 or something. But then when I ran this one, uh, just top, top 10 rows, it is reading around 3 million page reads. That's huge. Well, query finishes in two seconds. Sure, yeah, query is fast. But IO, man, it's doing heavy IO reads. And think about this way. Right now, my machine is a, one of the very powerful machine. There is nothing else running on the system. And this system is creating um, really no workload for, I mean, it's just recording and just doing this thing, just single query. But Think about this way, on real machine, on a real system, when you run this thing, this is gonna to be something else, man. Think about, so many queries are doing 3 million page reads, your IO is gonna shoot up very, very high, very quickly. But, think about the scenario, when you were retrieving the entire table, hmm, I ran the entire table, an entire table is only reading well, it takes 12 seconds to run, so we just have to wait. And query is done, yeah, good. Entire query is taking 27,000 for entire table, and just when I put top 10, it is reading way more data. Now, a lot of people will say, hey, enable the execution plan, show us the execution plan, I'll just do it because you are asking. But 
that's not what I want you to focus right now. Um, look at this. Yep, here we go. There is a little bit key lookup, but key lookup is also reading only 10 rows. So, so when you look at over here, it reads 10 rows uh, because uh, the pop up says, look at that. Pop up says actual number of the rows for all execution is 10. Number of rows read, oh, that's the number which is just above it. Let me just highlight what I'm talking about. So you guys will understand there's something really not clear to me what is going on. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, just so you guys know, I'm just trying to talk to you guys. They are both just figuring it out. Like how optimizer is reading. It says number of rows read. Oh yeah, it's nine or oh, this many rows. But actual number of rows is 10. Hmm, so there is a difference between them. Okay, fine. I, I get that. So something um, going on. Um, I don't get that. Uh, or let's, I do get it. But let's park this on a side because I really want to get to some somewhere else first. Now, let's look at here. And this is fun. It says number of rows read around, this huge number, around million rows. Great. But the question is, isn't the same amount of the rows we were reading before? Like, look at this. When I did the star one, it actually read that much data. Huge amount of the data. It read and that's why it took so much time. Now by just doing top 10, this query is so expensive. What is going on? Yep, that's the question. And, and matter of the fact, actually, look at that amount of the rows, which you see over here, is around 1 million. Don't get confused with the commas and things. This is just local setting. So, yep, that's it. Around 1 million records. Fun, isn't it? Now, look at the execution plan one more time. And a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, we actually figured it out. The troublemaker is the top. Shouldn't that be really helping? Uh, because it knows that I'm only going to read the 10 rows. What is going on? Why putting just top 10, making this thing so expensive? Now, our goal should be, our goal, yours and my goal should be, I'm going to use 10 and uh, let's get the same performance as a select star. Instead of doing this, I rather do this because that's better for my IO. Uh, yeah, right? Help me now. It's your goal. Any suggestions you guys have it? Uh, just share with me right now. And I want to know. So this query took that much. There are a few things which we can do. First of all, see if we can reduce the elapsed time under 250 milliseconds. Now, this one, I want to call it a soft challenge because everybody's machine will be different. Even my machine is different. Sometimes I get around 250 less or sometime more. But that's a challenge which I'm just saying around 250. But second one is the real challenge, which I really want everybody to have it. Reduce the page read to total tables page read. And here, when I do this, I don't have to create or modify or drop any index. Yep, no indexing modification. No index modification. Yep, nope. This is the fun one. So you're not allowed to cheat. I will cheat it later on. But no, not really. Now, let's run one more query. So what I can do, I figure it out that when I do select star, it just works amazingly fast. But when I do the top 10, it's bad. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do select first, and then on a top of it, I'll put a 10. How about that? Let's see if that works. I think that would be a good try for all of us and see if that is fast. Oh yeah, still, yep, nope, 3 million, not working. This is also too high. Nope, no, this is not a good solution. What else can we do? That is one thing we can do is subquery, which you already seen it. This is the subquery, not really working. Um, so now let's do another one. Have you heard about offset? Uh, in an earlier version of the SQL Server, offset and like fetch and everything was people was like, oh yeah, don't use order by. Yeah, not good. Uh, or just don't, re don't use top. That's not good. Use offset. I'm going to do that now. Uh, see, we need to try out. We need to keep our mind open. Even I don't know which one will be the right solution. I'll keep my mind open and we'll keep on trying. So there we go. So I ran this query, uh, I have offset uh, used over here, says, yep, offset start from zero rows. And then I will say, 
fetch 10 rows and that's it. Let's run. Oh, I already ran. So query result is here. And let's go to messages. Oh yeah, CPU time is high. Logical read. Still a uh, 3 million reads. That's trouble. I am just, I'm just not sure what is going on here. How come SQL Server is supposed to read written less amount of the rows and doing reads 10 times more? I have no idea. But let's try one more thing. Ranking function. You heard about it, right? See, we all always like I this is my problem, or this is what I see. When I go, what do you, what do I do? I do single thing for living. I do SQL Server performance tuning. If you have a SQL Server performance problem, I've seen it all. Um, and I can, I would like to help you out. But the, but my challenge is this, when I go to a place, uh, people say, can we use ranking function? Can we use this? Sometime I don't want to try this out because I also want to keep my mind open. I many times found beautiful thing, but learning a lot about T-SQL has enabled me to learn. Like there are, by changing things in T-SQL, we can sometimes do magic, but many times, I'm just banging my head on a wall because I don't know internals of query optimizer. So we tried one thing about offset and I thought it's amazing and fast, not the case. Now I'm going to try out the second thing, um, which is top 10. And this time I'm going to use the ranking function and going to filter out on ranking one. And let's see if that works out. You know, you just have to help me out here. You guys have to help me out here and see if that works. Oh, ranking function did two things. Look at that. First one, our logical reads are around 28,000. Good job. That's fa fair, isn't it? And CPU time is also reduced to less than 250. Now, remember, this was a soft target, but I did hit it very well. Okay, good job. And look at the result. 146, 674, and 450. Was it the same result we were getting in a first query? Because we should definitely match our results. And when I go back and check the results, or oh yes, yeah, very similar, uh, 146, 674, 155. Oh, here there is a 155. Um, and when I run this one, did I get 155 at the end? Mm, let's go check it out. Really not. Oh, so ranking function did really work fast, but it didn't give me the same answer. Mm. Now, my question to all of you is look at the date first. It says 87, 87, and 814. Okay, that's fair. Oh, 146 is here. That's good. So, what could have happened is that because the 8414 is not completely covered, um, that range, that maybe it's the same. So I should just increase this to like, instead of 10, I can, let's call it 20, right? And see um, how far, uh, oh no, 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 no. It should not be here. It should be here, uh, 21. Oh yeah, see, I'm still making mistake. T SQL is fun. Uh, then this thing comes into picture. I should have that both. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, this is, uh, Ah, 15. Oh, so look at that. Um, uh, we have to take 10, 814. And here is that one. So look at this number. And do we see that number which we had earlier? I am thinking that I am not sure if I'm seeing the same thing what I was seeing earlier. Okay, um, fair. Um, that's a great... Uh, way it's a 155 so remember 155 562 okay good job now let's go and check it here and i think so i think so we will find that number somewhere there we go so guys it's very clear that's a because of the range issue we were facing it so don't get confused the reason why i took this time to show you this behavior um, is a lot of people, when they try to run this script, um, every time that there is a different data, sometimes when you use a ranking function on top, and if you're, if you're qualifying condition, like right now I have order date, right? So delivery date is the one 
um, which is null, but then the order date is the one which I'm using to order. And then I'm just cutting it off, chop, chopping it off. So um, don't expect, don't expect the same, um, uh, if the entire group is not covered, like right now, in our case, if you look at it, this entire group of 814 was not covered. Um, you can get any result from this. Like if you're going to say top 10, uh, this two row are equally good as this two row. So don't think um, you'll get the same kind of row. This is a one more thing you need to remember when we are discussing about optimizer. Uh, a lot of people don't know. They, they use a different kind of solution in T-SQL and they're like, oh yeah, I'm getting a different results and they get really uh, panicked. Um, so I think, I hope you guys understand that both of these are equally correct answer is this too. So that's the, that's the fun about optimizer. And if you want your data into certain order, then you should have said, yep, all right. You should have just said, hey, order by order number. And now you will get the same kind of thing. So order uh, by is one of the very critical uh, clause, which we should be carefully using it. Don't take it lightly. Now, I talk about that. Um, um, let's run this one. This is the fun one, a simple one. I remove the top 10 and we know what happens. Uh, I still have a delivery date and order by and see what happens. So I'm, whoa, whoa, hold on. Uh, what just happened? I put delivery date is null and did order by, okay. And I just run this select statement. It was like instant. Oh yeah, logical read was 20. Why? CPU time, look at the CPU time. This is the best possible CPU time. So as per me, this looks like the best possible solution. Logical reads are same as the original table and the CPU time is very little. So definitely at this point of time, I'm going to give entire vote to my this solution, which is select this one. But isn't this is like retrieving lot of rows? Right now I'm retrieving around 2000 rows. This is not a good idea. What do you think we should do guys? Now, I think I'm in a trouble. When I'm retrieving everything or way more than I need, I'm getting amazing speed. But as soon as I'm trying to cover this one, I'm trying to retrieve only tap top 10 and anything, what should I do? Any suggestion, any of you have it. There's a one suggestion I have it right now is take this one and insert into the temp table. And once I insert this in temp table, I can read the te uh, top 10 rays just like I'm doing it. But then that's the exactly the problem I'm trying to bring it on a table. Top 10 is the challenge, isn't it? Like it should just work, but it's really not working. So I would still settle with this inserting into temp table and just trying to get a top 10 and see if that works. But let's go further and see if we have any other suggestion. How about top 101? Do you guys think that will do something? Um, I'll just take the same query and now I'm going to put this the same thing there. I know, I know some of you might be frustrated where we are going, but that's the real world performance tuning, isn't it? Query optimizer is continuously putting a challenge in front of us. And that happens to me when I go to tune the queries. Now, wow, hmm. CPU time is still reasonable, but look at the logical reads. Isn't that a lot of it? Lot, lot. Um, I think so. Um, I think I'm a little confused with this one. Logical reads are still the same as the reading the entire table. Um, and um, yeah, so it is still means I'm reading the entire table and uh, CPU time is less. So that's good. That's good. Okay, one more shot we can do is by index hint. This is fun. Um, I'm going to use index hint here, which says top 10 for sure, and index hint, and this time I'm putting index zero. So that means it's actually not doing any index. Index zero is supposed to do a scanning of your base table. Let's see if that worked. Whoa, CPU time is this, but logical read, is still a lot, same as the entire table. So this hint, even though it's cheating, really didn't do good. <sighs> I'm getting tired. I'm not doing anything. SQL Server Query Optimizer is not getting away. 
best thing so far which i found was this where i'm actually driving lot of rows uh, but cpu time is little and this is no not even this one now what was that what was the thing which we was really working see query optimizer is still cheating us giving us all these kind of challenges um uh, thing which worked once may not work again and things like that so what should we do what should we actually do in this scenario i'll tell you what we can do index hint won't work earlier things are not working now let's do this top large number and put on a 10 on top of it let's see this time if we can cheat our query optimizer result was pretty quick isn't it yep yeah logical reads were still the entire table i don't think so we are going anywhere with this much logical read i think we settle with it no matter how many rows we are reading uh, the cpu time is reasonable but logical reads are not getting down at all what we should do guys this is really challenging isn't it so let me just slow down i want to explain you this this is what i do at at real world customer place and this is what i was discussing with hugo that why query optimizer works like that is it bug is it like i want to be funny and say this is the feature or i should be any method and say oh this is the best you can do honestly this is everything is normal we need to understand query optimizer and we need to accept that query optimizer has so many different feature and it is continuously trying to optimize that for us whatever we are seeing on the screen is all justified we just need to know how query optimizer works in a different scenario and we are good to go so one thing what i learned right now when i put a top 10 or when i'm limiting it with any of the keywords syntax or things query optimizer is still not letting me win and somehow it is kicking in certain kind of statistics and certain kind of algorithm that it has to read 10 times more data now you might say is it a limitation of the query optimizer you can say that whatever we feel like we can say that but this is how it works right now um to make it work optimally um we just have to come up with uh, some some more creative way like 101 really didn't do a big cut in one way it's still reading a lot of data just doing um removing top 10 really didn't help 21 didn't help um well offset was also not a um, great solution so we yep, try it out just know all of the things which you can do uh, offset was like really really horrible in this scenario just know all what you can do and see which one works for you at least you should have a weapon um index in didn't help us at all so i don't recommend you to use hints at all um now i have a solution with cte do you guys think this would help okay attempt table one i already discussed with you might help oh cte no nope. uh, cpu time reasonable logical reads absolutely no oh hold on it says create index and that would have helped now this hint if you believe in it um i think uh, that might also create lot of trouble for us um we should definitely uh, not always believe this hint sometime it works sometime it doesn't work that is the entire story of it if you go on my website i have a couple of um, um uh, videos uh, which is explaining you why these hints are not good and also there is a couple of videos which talks about how when you create index um your query slow down so but that's a off topic right now if you re really need more data just write to me or subscribe um on to the that email address which i share on the top uh, i'll just do it right now uh, you can just go drop your email address and yes um i'll share with you the links and things um uh, where you can see that now oh yeah so ct didn't work out as well um let's do a little bit um, cheating now that's what i wanted to show you so one of the alternative which you can do is this one uh, where you just put some fancy order by 
Uh, but here you have to make some assumption that no order is ever overdue. Now, this kind of business logic you can do if you understand the business. If you're a full-time employee, you can do that. But people like me who just go for firefighting may not even understand the business logic. We are not good help here. So I would not come and figure it out. But if you know your business logic, uh, you can definitely do. Now, it's the time to do cheating. And that's this one. What you can do is that you can create index. But remember, our one of the condition was not to create index. So if I create index, I know I can do cheating. And after creating index, top 10, let's see how good it is. Amazing. The logical read reduced. Then CPU time is awesome. Remember the logical read 1983. This is when I have order date as a key column and delivery date as um, included column. What happens if I reverse them? I can try that one out as well. So let me just drop this one, uh, create the new index where I flip them right now. Previously, it was order date, delivery date. Now I flip them and let's see what happens. So I flip them uh, and now we'll see what happens. Hmm. Okay. But whoa, whoa, hold on. This looks like awesome index. CPU time zero, logical read is just an eight. And result is what we have been saying all this time. Man, this was the index which we really needed to, um, really needed all this time. And matter of the fact, even though I don't like query hints at all, I can tell you when we were running this query, um, let's see what hint, I dropped the index, uh, and the index hint which we were getting is actually good. So once in a while, this green warning can help you. But trust me, this green warning, most of the time can be confusing. But yep, I just wanted to demonstrate to you that once in a while, that green warning will work too. So if you go to many presentation, everybody will say, yeah, green warning will mislead to you. Yes, they do. But they are great starting point. Just try them out once and see if that works. If not, just like all the solution which we tried today, you can just get rid of that and that will work. So, yep, that's the learning which I wanted to uh, share with you. So let's go. Uh, I have a few more things to talk about. We are still discussing what I had conversation with uh, uh, Hugo. I have a very interesting thing to talk about what I had discussed with uh, Eric and which I will share with you. So I just want to come to a conclusion right now. And that's very simple. Um, Sometimes, even though I don't like indexes like any other person, but that is the way to solve. And if you think like, you know, when you put the top 10 or sorting or filtering and you will be reading the less amount of the data, that may not be the case too. You might want to try things out like Statistics IO and check if you're reading more data, less data, how the things are. And that's only way you can figure it out. And there is not one solution which will work. You might want to try out every single thing and see which one works. So don't make up your mind. Let's not have a prejudice. Let's not have any ego and we should try different things. While I hate um, index warning like many of us, it once in a while works, so give it a fair shot. When you sit for tuning query, when I sit for query tuning, I keep my mind open and I recommend you keep the same way. Now, before I go to the next demonstration, do you want to see something fun? Something really cool? Let's see that. So um, while I was working with my customer, my customer's junior DBA ran to me and said, but now look at the solution which I came up with. Select top 100% or a 10, uh, just the same one. Because I remember I had a like, top like very huge number, large number. He come up with this and said, look, logical read 158 CPU times zero. This is the faster solution than yours. Now, look at your answer. When you use, oh, look at this entire date range is wrong. Everything is wrong because when you put top 100% uh, SQL Server thinks, oh yeah, you're just going to retrieve everything and it will directly apply top 10 over here. And that's what happens. You can just put top 99 if you want, 
but then you might get wrong answer in many cases. So, yep, 99 gives you a little bit correct answer, but top 100%, but then 99 uh, has a different problem. <laughs> now it uses the temp table, so that also not a good idea. So you guys now know, right? So multiple ways to solve the uh, same problem, but top 100%, not a great way. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for listening it. Let's go to the next demo. If you want anything, um, you can go to this URL, drop the email address, and we can get it. Thanks to Hugo, who helped me build this. Now, we go to the another demonstration. We have a few more minutes left, so don't try to run away. Um, this is a quick one. This is from Eric Darling, the smart guy who writes on um, strange name, site's name. No kidding. It's Eric Darling Data. is one of friend, a good friend. And we had a good conversation about this one. And he was sharing with me, said, Pinal, many times people has no idea how to read the operators. And this is the live demonstration which I'm going to show you. So fun one, easy one, very simple demonstration. Uh, I'm going to show you is that I'm going to have a single table and, and, and there is index on it. Um, uh, so I'm just going to read this one right now. Um, look at that. Very quick, isn't it? Logical reads are only three. Pretty quick, actually. This is like super fast query, isn't it? Super cool. Now the same query, if I put it into view and I'm going to make it a schema binding, let me do that. Very simple thing. I took a query, put it in a view. Nothing fancy about it so far. And now I will put the same query into the store procedure. Okay, fine. Good. So same query in the view, same query in the store procedure. Only difference is store procedure takes the parameters. Query cannot, I mean, view cannot take parameter, but you can take parameter like this. Now my question to all of you is when I run both of them, which one is going to give us better performance? Now, don't look at the rank because as I explained you earlier, earlier time, it's um, a very different thing, but because of the windowing and things. But look at the logical read is 28,000. So the view, even though we are passing a where condition, is reading the entire table. But store procedure is doing three logical read. So when I ran both of this, at this point of time, it is very clear to me that view is running very slow and queries stored procedure is running fast. Um, so this was like, a lot of people will look at it and say, oh yeah, I know, view is slow because everything you pass in over here runs first, then after the where condition applies. No, that's partially true. Actually, view takes this parameter. I mean, I mean like there is a concept called expand and no expand. I don't want to go and discuss too much about it because this concept has been out since year 2000, like SQL Server 2000 or even before that, I think this concept was that. And um, yeah, we all know this is a very pretty old concept and uh, um, I don't want to spend time on it, but I can tell you this, it's not the view which is slowing down all of everything. It's the way the query optimizer works and that's natural. I mean, in normal condition, this would have just worked fine. But right now, it's creating a lot of trouble for us. Um, it's not the store procedure is compiled and it's fast. All these are not true. Let me show you how, we, instead of using view, um, you can make um, uh, this thing run faster. And that is with the function. What you can do is you can create table valued function. And that will work like view for you because you, why do you want a view? Okay. The only reason you want to use view, so you can have select star from. You want your table in the from. Why? Um, many reasons. One of the reasons is like you want to join to that. And, and, and there are infinite reasons why people want that. Anyway, so you that's the reason why you want in a store procedure, you can't do that. You just have to insert this into another temp table. That's why you want from. Now, instead of view, if you use table valued function, and this is the same select statement, guys, same statement which you have seen few seconds before. Now, I if I run the table valued function where you can use that in a from once again, 
and you run this and look at that awesome speed again so learning is very simple so uh, views as some issues that it cannot accept parameters and that sometimes creates the problem so look at these are the three things which i've written um some once in a while you walk into the situation where views um like if you have sequence projects and things like that you cannot push your parameter which is outside from inside so remember the logic and the explanation which i was giving you that view has to run this first and then after the parameter applies that doesn't happen all the time but once in a while will happen too and in those scenario when there is a sequence and when the parameter is not pushed in you will get poorest possible performance so when in doubt um and when this kind of situation happens when your views are running slow you may consider using um table valued function and they may help you as well so just keep your mind open because sql sort of optimizer works um, way more different uh, way different way than we think so yeah eric found this one and i was like oh yeah this is so interesting and and i want to say thank to the folks the um, uh, eric hugo and every, all of you also you can teach me too and i would be happy to take your stories and share with people as well um uh, this this is my this presentation which i'm doing is going to be ever evolving ever changing because there will be new stories new things which we always bring and one of the one of the one is also funny uh, which i discovered with at my client's place and that was I, i don't want to go too deep in it um but i would just tell you this so if you want you can go to sequelothry.com and as soon as you drop your email address you'll get a link with that video also which uh, video talks about um how uh, select you create a select statement uh, your select statement you create an index on it and that index even not being used can slow down your entire system isn't that is funny isn't that annoying that index even though not being used can slow down your select statement we know it slows down insert of the delete but it has the capacity to slow down your select as well and um, yeah well i'll happy to share the script as a homework so just that there you go i think we covered everything what we wanted to cover uh, query optimizer can be deceptive confusing but it's a very honest i really love microsoft's progress um, they are continuously doing um, they are improving a lot of things behind the scene and uh, i'm just overall thinking that i can't wait for the next version of the sql server and that might be even better i have a one more presentation um uh, to do so yeah search for me on the portal and you can find uh, more learning for it and uh, well thanks for listening me my friends um um we are, as i said we are um, not in front of each other it doesn't mean we don't talk um, i want your feedback i want you to hear what you think about this presentation share your story so i can share with everybody this is ever evolving presentation and with that i think i want to say have a good day goodbye and and trust your instinct along with query optimizer see you soon